Thank you very much, Dirk, for the introduction. And uh, hello, everyone. And thank you for the invitation, because it's a pleasure for me to be here today and speak about some of the insights from my PhD. I just finished my PhD a month ago, so it's very fresh. And um, yeah, my PhD focuses really on how we can maximize uh, change from the use of sustainable tourism indicators. So starting um, straight away with this slide, this is how we think we create change with sustainable tourism indicators. We have data, we collect data. From the data, we identify problems and solutions. And then we assume that automatically policymakers are taking evidence-based policy decisions from it. And as a result of this, the sustainability performance of the destination is going to improve. As you can see, this is a very linear process that is uh, mechanical and doesn't really uh, account of all the complexities that there are around tourism governance. Especially, it doesn't really acknowledge the human element that it comes when we start implementing sustainable tourism monitoring schemes. So this was especially clear when we conducted a study at the University of Surrey, where we tried to see how many destinations that were implementing the European tourism indicator system were actually engaging with, with all of these steps. And while there were a lot of destinations that were very interested in collecting data and they actually collected the data, very few engaged in taking evidence-based policy decisions and in doing something in regard to improving the sustainability uh, of their destination. So here you can see that there is something wrong with the system and something wrong with the linearity that we um, think when we implement sustainable tourism indicators. That's why also um, with some people that I started speaking are saying that indicators belong to the past, they belong to the 20th century and not, 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 not 21st century. Um, I actually disagree with this statement because the argument that I have with the PhD is that it's not the indicators to be wrong as an instrument, but it's actually the way we implement them in the destination that we are actually not really accounting of all these complexities that happen with tourism governance. So through the PhD, I tried to identify uh, a series of enabling conditions that when we start implementing them at destinations, we start to see real change happening. And uh, of course, in this presentation, I won't have the time to, to focus on all of them. So I'll just focus on a few um, of these. But the common um, approach of these enabling conditions is that we should acknowledge the diversity that there is at all the different system levels. So at international level, we have the INSO indicators. And they provide a very comprehensive approach of what sustainability, um, of what the sustainability performance is in a certain area. However, when we start implementing this at the destination level, we are faced with lack of collaboration with stakeholders, with lack of buy-in. Um, and the reason for this is because we don't acknowledge the diversity that there is at every single destination. And by diversity here, I don't really mean that a coastal destination has different needs than an urban destination or uh, a rural destination. Of course, there is that diversity as well. But if we think at the destination as a system on its own, that is composed by different um, stakeholders, and all of them have a different understanding of what sustainability means. They have different beliefs on what they think it's important to measure at the destination. So uh, by doing that, we need to um, implement participatory approaches that acknowledge this diversity. That means that we need to work, um, we need to start work with destinations in creating these participatory approaches in understanding what is really important for them first. And then based on that, aligning what is important for them 
with what is available at INSTO level or international level. Um, the same thing happens once we start going even deeper at the destination level. So as I said, we have different individuals and each person is going to have an a different interest as to how, why they are implementing or they're interested in uh, collecting data and implementing uh, monitoring schemes. For example, uh, one person may be interested in monitoring schemes because they want to uh, increase the visibility of their destination. They want to change the image of their destination. And some maybe are interested because they want to solve a very specific sustainability aspect. So all these different interests are all legit, but they need to be acknowledged once you start um, having participatory approaches. So together with stakeholders, you first acknowledge what is everybody interested in and how can we all develop a common sense of purpose as to why we are implementing um, participatory approaches. So this all links with this uh, graph here. So this graph basically says that um, when we implement indicators that are not considered relevant and important to the destination and are not clear to understand, then they are not gonna be used in the policymaking process and they're not gonna be used to, to take decisions. Whereas in cases in which indicators are very relevant and crucial to all stakeholders in the destination, and they are very easy to understand, then we see these evidence-based policy processes that we always want to have with indicators. So the conclusion here is that we should start small and simple. First, you have to understand what is really relevant to the destination. Maybe if you have a destination that is just um, starting their sustainability journey, the indicator may be only one. So you start first with that one that is all relevant for everyone and it's clear to understand. And then by doing that, you build a process of monitoring. Then you start uh, creating a learning infrastructure where you um, challenge the mental models of the stakeholders and you start moving the indicators that are included in the lower part of the graph so that are not relevant towards the relevant side of the graph. Um, what you start doing is also start creating uh, processes where you make meaning of the data together. So sometimes we are only given some kind of benchmarking tool where we are, uh, where we say, okay, based on the result of this indicator, um, you have, you know, an orange result, you have a green result or a red re result. But that doesn't really give us a lot of meaning. Uh, we, we need to create the meaning together with stakeholders by having these participatory uh, approaches. So, I just wanted to give you this very uh, short and little insights from, uh, from my PhD. And I wanted to tell you that um, we are developing also a playbook that includes a sort of practical activities uh, that embed these particip participatory approaches that I spoken about that actually create buy-in and high levels of collaboration and engagement from stakeholders. So if you are interested in, in, in them, uh, please write me and um, I'll be very happy to, to tell you more about it. Um, so this is all from me. Uh, thank you very much for listening and I'll hand over to you, Dirk. <laughs>